Drawn by the romance and the messy reality of whaling, we delve into a pivotal yet overlooked chapter in American history, the saga of black whalers. Here, the pragmatic meritocracy of the seas created an egalitarian space unlike any other. In the 19th century, as the American whaling industry peaked, a unique narrative unfolded, black whaling. This was more than an industry, it was a way of life, particularly in New England, where about 20 to 30% of the 175,000 whalers were people of color. A large chunk of the early, you know, first hundred years of Yankee whaling, it was pretty much, you know, the first 70 years of Yankee whaling, it was pretty much a meritocracy. And, and you know, if you're gonna put, it's almost a million dollars into the building of a whaler and outfitting that vessel for a two-year voyage, uh, you know, you're, you want the best possible people you can find. And um, uh, very often those, those were the, the men who could do the job. And if they were, if there was a black man, that's great. If it was a Native American, that's great. If it was a Portuguese Islander, that's great. If it was a, uh, you know, South Seas Pacific Islander, that's great. Um, if it was a, you know, if it was your next door neighbor's son, that's great. Uh, you know, it didn't, it didn't matter. I mean, the, the, the goal was a, a full cargo and homeward bound, you know, clean sperm oil, you know, that's the goal. And however you get to that goal is fine. Whaling contrasted sharply with other maritime services. Here, a colored man's worth was measured by his skill and ability, not his race. Philip Foner and Ronald Lewis in Black Workers encapsulate this ethos. A colored man is known and looked upon as a man and is promoted in rank according to his ability and skill to perform the same duties as a white man. Whaling voyages were far from comfortable, characterized by lack of comfort, mind-numbing boredom, and potential life-threatening danger at every turn, as Skip Finley describes. Yet, in these daunting conditions, many people of color found unprecedented opportunities. Seamen's protection certificates were essential for whalers of color, serving as proof of their American citizenship and a shield against the injustices of the time. We meet remarkable figures like Shorey T. William, born in Barbados in 1859, who rose to become the first black whaling captain on the West Coast. His voyages, known as Happy Ships, earned him a revered reputation. Then there's Lewis Temple, born around 1800, who never went to sea, but revolutionized whaling with his temple's toggle iron, making it extremely difficult for whales to escape. In Mystic, Connecticut, stands the Charles W. Morgan, the last wooden whaling ship from the 19th century, a symbol of the era's challenges and achievements. These narratives, rich with struggle and triumph, highlight a crucial part of American history, where the sea offered a rare platform for equality. The legacy of these brave individuals continues to inspire our journey towards a more inclusive world.